I was sent a beta test unit for this project called the Baby Belt Printer. And actually, if you go looking for that, that name on Google, you'll probably find this exact printer. I think this might have been the first prototype that Rob made, and then he sent it off to me to play around with it. And it's a really clever idea using these very inexpensive, what are these called? The, the, BY, the 28BYJ stepper motors? These things are like $2 a piece. And so the total component package here, the whole printer could be made by a manufacturer for like $100. And that's the idea, right? A $100 printer coming from China, which has the capability to print like, you know, X and Y, something like that, but infinitely long in Z. So you could print parts on this printer, which you couldn't possibly print on any other $200, $300 printer just because of that infinite Z. Now, we all know about belt printers. Most of us from the, uh, the CR30, the Creality 3D print mill, which is what I've got here. And when I did the review on this one, and you know everybody else talks about it as well, the, the key distinguishing feature of this printer is the belt, which is made from a like a conveyor belt or um, just like a box mover, like think of an Amazon warehouse that's moving those boxes, kind of like a treadmill belt. Um, so it's a repurposed belt already made for an application, which they're now sort of, you know, putting onto the printer here and it works, but it's not ideal. There are better solutions on the more expensive belt printers that are like um, stainless steel belts or carbon fiber belts even. So the belt is the key to a belt printer. And if you have a really great belt material, I think you can get really great prints. Um, that being said, we're still gonna have to deal with that 45 degree layer line, which uh, makes parts, you know, everything, all parts break in FDM printers along the layer line. So having you know, most parts that are gonna be long and skinny printed on a belt printer are basically gonna be, you know, they're gonna have layer lines on the skinny axis, which makes them highly likely to snap. I know that Tom Sandlotterer did a video where he tried to modify his belt printer so it was printing more flat, and there were issues with that as well. A lot of the issues come down to the slicer software, but yeah, there's a lot of promise to be had with belt printers, and it had never occurred to me that one of those promises could be really inexpensive printers that print very long parts. So uh, I wanna tell you guys about my experience with this beta test unit. It is far from perfect. This is not a printer that you run out and buy expecting to just pump off parts like you would on the 3D print mill. It's not fully baked yet. It's definitely beta test. Now, that being said, there are some heavy hitters involved. I know Knack, the guy who uh, did the, what is it, the White Knight, 3D printer. He's the one who sort of inspired the 3D print mill here. So he's actually redesigning and making a fork of this printer. And he's posted his files over there on the Discord. By the way, the link is in the description. So he's involved. Um, my friend Michael from the, what is it, the AutoDrop 3D uh, company there. He's doing that project. You guys have seen him on the channel before. He's also involved. And of course, the, the project is done by a guy named Rob Mink. It's sort of his baby, his baby belt. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's a, there's a lot of, oh, 3D Print Professor also has a beta test unit and I think he's talking about rebuilding it and playing around with it and making it even better. So you guys should go check out his channel for more on this printer. But what I'm gonna do for the rest of this video is just tell you guys my experience with this beta test. It'll give you guys an idea of where the project currently stands and you might have some ideas for how you would improve it and then you could go jump in on this, I think, in fact, I'm almost certain that it has been open sourced. And so this is gonna be a community project going forward. And wouldn't it be awesome if the community could create a you know, $100, $200 belt printer that actually worked. And if we could come up with that, I guarantee that uh, some company in China would pick it up and they'd start selling it. So that this would be something that everybody would have access to. So the first thing you might notice about this printer is the fact that it doesn't have a screen attached to it. So you're not able to control the printer at the printer. And in order to control it, I've actually hooked up my Raspberry Pi here. And to interface with it here, I've got the tablet. And if I press the home button here, you can see that the printer will start to do its auto home routine using, uh, what is it? The Trinamic sensorless homing. So it's basically just running up to the stop there and reading the feedback voltage and it knows it's got to the end. 
And integrating sensorless homing into this printer was a great move by Rob to eliminate components and bring the costs of materials for the printer down. Now another great move that he did was to use these tiny little guide rods for the, the linear motion rods. And then uh, he has PTFE tubes as the bearings. So they're just sort of like, you know, PTFE liners, PTFE bearings sliding. It's, what a, it's great. It's a great idea. So I'm just loving the simplicity here. It really lives up to the maxim of less is more. Now you guys can see a couple little dabs of other colored filament besides the yellow, and that was my attempt to sort of fix what was funky. This uh, got damaged in shipping, so there's these little ears that are holding the guide rods here for the x-axis, and this ear just sort of snapped off, so I used my 3D printer pen to uh, kind of, you know, make this little goober to hold it back in place. And then over here, the um, well, you can see the flex on the housing for the motor transmission. I guess you. this is just a worm gear. It's a big 3D printed worm gear in there because this little motor doesn't have enough torque and the belt sure doesn't need to move very quickly. So uh, this is a great solution, but the housing kind of flopped back and forth. And so I needed to just tack it in place to get the print to work. Like I said, very much a beta test unit. There should be two screws that hold this housing in place. And you can also see where the print for the housing went a little bit cockeyed and we got some bed peeling on that part. But um, yeah, hey, it all works. To me, the number one thing that could be improved on these printers is the belts. Uh, this is pretty clever. It does work. It prints onto the fabric. It does okay. But I'll tell you what, it does not peel off the fabric very easily. Taking a look underneath, we can see the control board is one of these Robin, MKS Robin uh, boards. Now, apparently, uh, these are getting harder to come by because of the chip shortage from China and all that kind of stuff. But uh, they are available, and this is... You know, just the way that it's been, the firmware has been made for this board because it is a reasonably inexpensive board. So, you know, talk about this. If this is the board you want to use, maybe you want to go crazy and put a you know, $150 duet control board in there instead. Uh, you know, whatever floats your boat. But uh, as it stands, I think this is a $200 printer. Now, one thing I do want to dwell on is this design for the extruder. Look at how integrated it is into the overall design. Rob did a fantastic job you know, living by the precept of less is more. And this extruder is no exception, except that uh, it needs to be a little bit more to be functional. Can you guys see just how crooked that bearing is? So the tension has sort of twisted the PLA and the bearing is kind of twisted, so it's not making great contact with the, um, the filament driving gear there. And this is what it looks like as it's printing. You'll notice a couple of key behaviors here. First of all, uh, it dwells. It just sort of pauses at points. And that's just so that those tiny little stepper motors can do the movements. Uh, they just aren't capable of moving quickly. And those dwells are going to cause problems because you're going to get ooze that happens in the pauses. So that's going to lead to uh, some artifacting. But that's kind of the least of our worries. You'll notice that I'm getting some pretty significant gaps in the print. And I don't know what that's coming from for sure. It might have something to do with the extruder that I was just talking about, but it also might have something to do with the, uh, the flexibility of that belt. I mean, look at how much that thing can stretch out of the way. And so we could just be getting um, inconsistent movement in the Z axis. You guys see the movement there in this stepper motor? So it's not affixed very securely to this housing. And I did that on purpose because I, when I fully cinched that up and tighten it down, it binds the worm gear here against the, the big wheel in there. And I think it's that movement and the sort of eccentricity of the print inside there that's causing this periodic um, you know, gap to happen in the printing. Now you can see on this print here how it's got a really wide base. That's supposed to be a raft, but there's no way I'm gonna be able to separate the raft from the sword here. And this is a previous print uh, that I tried to do of the sword. But the most interesting thing to show you guys about this print right here is the fact that it didn't release from the bed. Even after it went around the roller, I had pieces of this sword stuck to the very bottom of the printer. And I'm getting pretty good adhesion to the, uh, the, the fabric of this belt. So that problem was caused most likely by the fact that I'm like over extruding into the fabric. And so I can't get it to release well. And there's no way to do like baby 
Z steps because the way that a, a belt printer Z is this direction. So I actually want to do baby Y steps to get it to where it's situated against the belt correctly. And with the Octoprint interface, there's really no way to do baby Y stepping. So uh, that's just not an option. And so I'm going to have to sort of flash new firmware just to adjust the Y offset to get the nozzle in the right position uh, for printing on this belt. I hope you guys aren't fooled by the lack of polish on this printer as I'm showing it to you. And if you are, let me show you what's possible with a redesign. This is Nax redesign. He's added a whole bunch of fasteners. It's not going to be as simple or as inexpensive, but wow, like this thing looks solid the way that he's done it. One thing that I really like is I think he added a print platform underneath the belt. Uh, that's that's something that I, I consider to be kind of necessary. You guys saw as I was touching the belt, it just flexes a lot. And so I think we need uh, a solid bed underneath the belt. And you can see right here, just like how much more substantial the whole worm gear apparatus is in Nax design. So I think he's not gonna see the same problems I'm having with the, uh, the gaps in the extrusion. I like the arrow there in case you were wondering which direction the print goes. Looks like Avatar The Last Airbender. And he's still got the same extruder mechanism. And like I already said, that really does need to be redesigned in my opinion. But first and foremost, Look at his beautiful screen right there, front and center. So he's got the classic, uh, what is that? The 12864 display is what it's known as. A rep wrap discount full graphics display. So goes great with your builds of Marlin, uh, really well established in that whole ecosystem, which is what this printer is running. So uh, yeah, that that's a great addition right there, um, but it adds money. So we're getting above the $200 price point that Rob set out as a goal for the project. So certainly room for improvement all around. I think that there's a happy medium between what Knack has created and what Rob created. We can make it so that the printer prints a lot better and yet doesn't cost as much as this version of Nax would cost to manufacture. But if you're a tinkerer and you really want to make the baby belt into the best printer that it can be, uh, you're going to be hard pressed to do better than what Nack has created right here. So that's about that. It's an awesome little project. I encourage you guys to get involved. Link to the Discord is in the description down below. And thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.